Okay, so we're going to be talking about how to improve in math quickly. So I want to uh, set the expectation uh, right off from this video. This is not some like get, get, you know, like in one day, get your math grade, go from an F to an A plus or, you know, um, master math in three days, because that's truly pretty much impossible, right? However, what you can do is you can start improving in mathematics pretty much immediately if you follow what I'm going to um, lay out. So I'm going to give you five uh, simple strategies to focus on that is a guarantee to start um, impacting your ability to learn and understand math. Now, um, where did I you know, get this information, you might be asking? Who am I? Well, you know, I've been teaching math for no two plus decades, many, many years. And over those years, I've not only taught math in schools and classrooms, online. Uh, I've, done, I've just been working with a whole v wide variety of students, young to old to all types. And you learn. You learn by seeing trends over time, over, not over 10 people or hundreds of people or thousands, ten, thousands and thousands of people. You see what works and doesn't work. So what I'm going to share with you here is basically those correlations um, that I see, hey, that uh, if you do these things, you're, you're really going to increase your chance to do well in math. So let's go ahead and reveal them. And let's start off with the first one. And that is notes. Okay, so do you take notes when you learn math? If you don't, then you're not going to do well in math. <laughs> I'm just pretty much, um, you know, that's a pretty strong statement, but I'm but everything that I've seen over all these years in my own personal experience, I have a degree in math and master's degree and all that kind of stuff, you need to take notes. But your notes need to be good notes, not just any notes. Now, how do you know you have good notes? Well, the main thing there is can you read your notes and learn from your own notes? So ask yourself, you know, if you learned something a month ago, can you reference in your notes and like scan over them, read them? and say, oh yeah, okay, I remember how to do that particular thing. You know, your notes are very good, they're informative. Your notes should be like self-teaching documents, okay? And it's a skill, you have to develop, uh, you know, the skill to take uh, good notes. Now, one thing I wanna um, kind of give you as a tip here is when you're looking at your notes, if you don't take good notes now, don't, um, you know, you need to change that, but don't beat yourself up on it. A lot of students don't take good notes. And that's why a lot of people struggle in math. But one place you can kind of start uh, with in terms of your notes is basically uh, write down uh, what the teacher writes. Okay. So what do I mean by that? So whatever your, um, um, whatever your teacher is putting on their chalkboard or their whiteboard or their presentations, most of that information should be in your notes. Okay. They don't put that, they, whatever a teacher, they think about their presentation in terms of what they're going to write down and they're doing it for your consumption. So that's a kind of a good indication of like, Hey, what should I put in my notes? Well, if the whatever the teacher's writing down, example prompts and steps that should be in your notes. Okay. Um, another thing I would say is maybe find, um, a student that takes great notes and kind of maybe copy their system. All right look and see and just get ideas and ask your teacher and just develop this. But this is a skill and it's a huge correlation. I could say everything I'm going to speak to uh, speak to you about here is important, but notes is just, it may be the most important. Okay. You got to take great notes. If you do that, it's going to help with your retention. It's just so many good things happen from you. So if you don't have good, uh, good notes now, you start taking good notes. And I would say, you know, if let's say you're halfway through a math course, uh, it's going to be difficult for you to go back on the, the material that you previously learned and start taking, you know, start taking good notes. Just start today. Okay, start where you're at and just start making this change and you'll start improving. All right, let's go to our second thing here. And that is neatness. And for some reason or another, this seems to be more of a problem for uh, males young, young men, boys, adults. <laughs> um, for me, I was very sloppy. Okay. So if you're sloppy, that's a problem. Okay. Remember math is a language. So how do you know if you're sloppy or not? You might be like, well, I'm not that sloppy. Well, good indication, just like notes is, can you read your own work? Yeah. You know, like if you did some math 
problems a couple months ago. Can you look at that and, you know, decipher, you know, read the, through the steps? I'll, you'd be surprised how many of you would write so sloppily that, that you look at it, you're like, oh, I don't even know what I wrote. It's okay. If that is you, it's okay that, you know, um, uh, it's common, let's just say, that you're at that point. But you have to change it, all right? So don't don't feel like, oh, boy, you know, I'm so sloppy. I'm the only one out there that's sloppy. Now, let me tell you something. As a math teacher, a lot of people are sloppy. And again, a lot of people struggle with math because a lot of people don't take good notes and a lot of people are sloppy, okay? These things count. They don't just count marginally. They count huge. They have a direct correlation, okay? So if you're sloppy, you need to start focusing on becoming neater, right? I have to go through this... Um, I had to go through this basically even in college when I started really uh, getting more into, you know, my uh, mathematics studies. I felt like, wow, you know, um, I need to even be focused. And I wasn't that sloppy, but I found that I even had to become even that much more neater because there was just too much going on in a math problem to manage. Okay. Now, one of the things you can do to help yourself um, improve here is to slow down. Okay. So slow down your writing. Don't try to, you know, write so quickly and, you know, really think about, you know, neatness as you write. Okay, so you definitely you want to slow down there. And uh, that's that's a little, little tip here to improve your uh, neatness. Okay, let's move on to our third thing here. And that is show work. All right, so what do I mean by that? Well, when you do a problem in math, okay, there's, there is a beginning... All right, so we're it's almost it's like a journey. You're gonna start from point A, and we're gonna to go to point B. It's a it's a a beginning and an end, all right? A start and an end, or whatever you want to say. It's it's a it's a you know um, a journey more or less, right? So what a lot of people do is they just get lazy and they skip and they were like, okay, here's a big problem. Let's say there's an equation 2x minus 7 equals 4x plus 9. And then they'll go oh, x equals negative 3. Okay? And they're like, they're like, well, what happened to all the work here? Well, they, they don't want to show it. Or they use mental math. That's These things, these are terms, by the way, that some of you may have been taught that have uh, actually backfired in terms of mathematical education. And I'm going to be careful here. Like, for example, mental math. Mental math is basically doing some of this in your brain, you know, like, you know, do, do, taking a few steps and then, you know, not having to write down every single step. That, for most people, it's good for you to mentally process that. But for most people, that's a dangerous thing in terms of they're gonna, you're going to make mistakes is what I'm talking about. OK, so, yeah, you should be mentally thinking about the steps and you should be able to do some of these calculations in your in your brain, if you will. But you need to write down the steps, step by step by step by step. You got to show your work, right? Um, and by the way, as a teacher, if this was the prom and all you did was write the answer, most teachers out there are not going to give you credit for 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 that, because you're not showing that you comprehend the process. Okay, so don't skip steps. Show your work. Okay, so how can you show your work? Well, you have to really be you know, uh, focused. You got to focus and you got to, again, slow down. All right. A good litmus test or a good um, way to know that you're doing well in these areas, notes, neatness, and show your work is if you can give your, give each one of these, like, you know, your notes or your problems, your homework to another person. Okay. Obviously like your teacher, right. And they can read very, with with very little trouble and understand everything that you wrote down, then that's a good indication you're on the right track. But if people have a trouble, especially your teacher, they're like, well, you know, you're not showing all the steps. Or, well, I can't really understand your notes or, you know, your, your, your writing's a little sloppy. Then you have to make some uh, uh, corrections in these areas. Now, again, these are very common areas for people who struggle in math. So, don't, um, you know, if you're out there and you're like, well, yeah, I'm okay in these areas. I'm pretty good. I don't, you know, so maybe I need to focus on other things. And maybe it's just because I don't understand math. I'm telling you right now that you're probably not as strong in these areas as you think you are. So improve, focus on these areas and you're going to, you're going to make even more, you're going to make improvements in math for sure.
Okay, let's move on to our next thing. And that is ask more questions. Ask more questions. So especially for those of you out there that are taking a class, an actual math class, and you have a teacher available to you, ask math questions. Like raise your hand. So many people, uh, they sit in class and are like, um, you know, I'm struggling. I don't really get this. But they just kind of like sit in silence. <laughs> or they'll struggle and they'll be like, oh, I don't get it. And then they'll just turn in their their uh, homework and they hope for the best. Listen, your teachers that are help you, okay? And you should be like trying to, you know, you got to be a little unfair, if you will, right? So there's you're, you're competing with other students. Be unfair. Be like, hey, listen, be selfish. I guess that's a better word. Is uh, raise your hand. Make that teacher come to you, okay? They'll be like, oh my gosh, here's. Uh, Bob over there, he's raising his hand again. But guess what? Bob is getting his questions answered. Hey, teacher, I still don't understand this. Boom. It's the it's that old adage, what's uh, the squeaky uh, wheel gets the grease or whatever. If you are constantly asking your teacher, hey, I don't get this, I don't get that, and you're making your teacher work hard and show you, that is going to help you improve in math. However, the reverse is true. If you're sitting there struggling, and even if you're not struggling but you're not sure if you're on the right track, then that is not good uh, either because you got to be confident in what you're doing. Okay. So even if you brought your teacher over and say, Hey, is this, am I doing this correctly? Oh yeah. You're on the right track. Boom. That affirmation, that's going to be good as well. So ask more questions. Okay. So let's get to our last one. And that is really simple. Practice more. So you're like, Oh my goodness. You know, this is like, so obvious, if you want to improve your math, just practice more. Yes, practice more, okay? So I'm going to, you know, direct this to, now let's say a lot of high school students or middle school students, homework, okay? You're assigned, let's say, 20 problems, 20 questions to do homework. Now, how many of you actually do all 20 questions, okay? And in this particular example, not everybody. I tell you, it's certainly not the majority of people. OK, it's those people who take good notes that are neat and show their work, you know, or asking intelligent questions in class, paying attention. These are the people that generally do all the proms and the homework assignment. OK, <laughs> all this stuff flows together. So if you're not willing to put in the time to practice, then you're just kidding yourself. So you got to ask, hey, do I really want to improve in math? Well, if you want to, you really got to start changing your 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 study habits. OK. I can guarantee you, if you're doing all of these things right here and you're still not being successful at math, then potentially you could have a problem with, let's say, your teacher maybe is not the right fit for you. I don't want to say your teacher is a bad teacher because maybe the other people are learning from them, but maybe that, you know, they're in, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll grant you, there are definitely um, mismatches in terms of students and teachers. Some students just can't learn some, some particular teachers, or you have another external thing going on, like your environment. Maybe the classroom you're in is very disruptive, or maybe you're not focused because you got other personal problems going on. And all those things do play into your ability to learn, not just math, but anything else. Okay. But aside from those things, if you feel like you're in a pretty good math class and you feel like your teacher's pretty, pretty good, you know, if you're doing these things, you should be improving, all right? This is the deal, improving in math. You shouldn't be failing. Now, I'll make one other note here is if you've struggled in math for many years, then that's another kind of topic altogether, okay? Uh, you, you have to get kind of those fundamentals squared away. You have to work on those in order to kind of catch up in math as well, okay? But even catching up in previous material that you don't understand, you're still going to have to bring all these habits to bear. All right. So this is the really the key um, areas to focus on is your approach to studying math. You start doing these things, I guarantee you you're, you're going to start improving. But anyways, I hope this video helps you out. Uh, let me go ahead and just leave you with this. I do a ton of this stuff for math and all kinds of different things on my uh, channel, mostly uh, math related. So if you, you like my videos, you know, please consider subscribing and 
you're going to have to hit that little bell notification on your smartphone or, or uh, browser to get notifications of my latest stuff. And hey, if you like the video, maybe give it a thumbs up and give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Um, I try to read as many comments as possible so I can keep making videos uh, to help you out. But again, you know, if you're out there, if you, this video caught your eye because you've struggled with math, I'll tell you right now, you can totally, you know, change your experience with math. And it's, 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 and what I mean by that is this, nobody wants to do something if they're failing in math, you know, it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's not, it's no fun. But if you slow things down and you start focusing on these areas, and these are proven areas with a high correlation, in other words, I've seen this throughout the years, many, 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 many years. I'm telling you, you're going to start um, having a better experience with math. But anyways, um, thanks for your time and thanks for watching the video. I hope it helped you, helped you out and um, have a great day.